Hey guys, it's Bryce and Aaron yet again for another Fusion 360 update. It's only been a month since our last update, and what do we got in this one, Aaron? Well, we got some great stuff, and it's in every workspace, but the drawings specifically, you're gonna see a lot of great new enhancements. Oh, let's not hold up any longer. Let's go and check it out. Cool. June was another great month for drawing updates. Let's jump right into creating one, and immediately, before I even add a drawing view, you're going to see one of the new features. Your title block will now auto-populate to include the name of the design, project, and other important details. After dropping in the base view, the next thing I'd like to do is project another view. To do this, let's dig into the menu, and again, you might notice a keyboard shortcut indicated next to the command. You'll also find these for move, center mark, dimension, and text. Back to that projected view, I'll hit P, then place the view. Looks like I didn't provide enough room for the new view, so let's hit M to move it. And again, you might notice the new Move Feedback, which provides clear details on what's selected and where it's going. We'll add some center marks, and next I want a hole callout. As I get into the text dialog, please take note that we now have easy access to special symbols and characters. This will save a ton of time, especially considering this callout uses five symbols in one go. After some dimensions are added, but before saving, let's add our company logo to the title block. Wait, what? That's right, double clicking on the title block shows the new ability to insert company logos using common image file types. We can manipulate scaling, location, and rotation on the fly, and swap it out just as easily if you grab the wrong one. In this next drawing, you can see I have a view already started, but to really understand the setup, an exploded view would help immensely. In the past, we would have had to create a separate drawing, but with the new multi-asset support, we'll find the ability to add model views and animations used in creating exploded views within the same drawing. Throw in some balloons and this is almost done. Those of you taking your drawings to DWG will be happy to see that when you export going forward, your files will automatically include layers for things like dimensions, border, hatch, title block, annotation, center lines, hidden lines, visible lines, step points. Sorry for the hideous coloration, just wanted to make those pop. In this update, we have improved the information presented in the component properties. Let's right click on the bracket component and change the part number and description, which will populate the bomb in the drawing of this component. But now, in Fusion 360, we can find the bounding box, center of mass, and moments of inertia for different components. We can copy all this information to the clipboard and paste it in a different application where this information is required. Next, let's start creating the soft jaws used to hold this component while machining. These components are intersecting. Let's use the combine tool to cut out the intersecting volume in the soft jaw with a Boolean operation. Now when different operations are used, the preview color will change. Joining will be blue, cutting will be red, and intersecting will be yellow. Previously, we could not control the opacity percentage when changing the opacity of a component. Now, in Fusion 360, we can choose one of the default opacity percentages or key in a custom opacity. This will work great when trying to illustrate how designs are assembled where the housing is transparent and the internal components are opaque. Now, let's take a look at some of the great enhancements in the CAM workspace. Fusion 360 gives some excellent tool tips when you hover over different input boxes inside a CAM toolpath. These tips will give you an idea of what will happen when you change these values. Now watch this tip. Hold shift before going over the input box. This will expose the expression used for this value. Now you may have wondered how to change the load on your cutter by default. Here is a little trick. Let's right click and edit the optimal load to change the equation to use 30% of the tool diameter. Notice how we get a quick preview of the current expression and the system default for this expression. Now looking at this design, this would require quite a few setups to machine on a 3-axis machine. Instead, let's program this part for a 5-axis positional job. First, make sure you turn on the CAM Tool Orientation Preview under the Preferences and Preview. This is now a tech preview for the base Fusion 360. Feel free to experiment with any of the other technical previews as well in this menu. Now let's add a 2D pocket. Let's start by picking our tool. Not only have we updated the Select Tool UI, but we've added some sample material specific tool libraries. These sample libraries provide a baseline for different feeds and speeds for different types of materials. Then a programmer can adjust these parameters as needed. The new tool UI for tool selection allows for further filtering of large tool libraries. 
While selecting a tool, we can filter based off a tool library, type of tool, size, and so much more. In this case, we will be machining aluminum, so let's select the inch aluminum library to filter down our tools. Currently, I am filtering for both a bull nose and flat end mill. I need a quarter inch flat end mill so we can turn off the bull nose end mill. This new UI will help filter large tool libraries. Let's machine one of the pockets on the side of this bracket. We will have to change the tool orientation to machine this pocket correctly. Now notice the tool orientation checkbox is on the geometry tab. We can enable the tool orientation checkbox and select the face of the pocket to set the Z direction. Next we can select the geometry to be machined. Finally, we can change the top height of the heights tab to change where the operation will start cutting. And there we have it, we just set up our first tool path for a 5 axis positional job. Of course, let's simulate this entire setup to see how the tool will change orientation around our part for this 5 axis positional program. Now let's check out some of the great enhancements to A360. In A360 we have project level discussions. Team members invited to the project can view and respond to different discussions involving the project. Previously, when a wiki was selected, A360 would start editing the wiki by default. Now, when a wiki is selected, A360 will default to viewing the document. Of course, we can edit the wiki and publish it to reflect the changes to the other project members. We have some great mobile updates to report on the iOS front. First off, when viewing models in perspective mode, you'll now be able to adjust the focal length by swiping three fingers up or down. This will help enhance the realism and make those models look even more fantastic than before. When viewing those animations, you'll no longer find yourself restarting after missing the onset. This is because the animations will no longer start playing automatically after being loaded. You'll also find that animation views can be rotated, panned, and manipulated in the same way as if we were viewing the model. Last but not least, you'll find added interrogation methods available in your mobile viewer. You can now measure areas and angles between points in your 2D drawings and 3D models. Us Android users need not to fear. The same functionality should find its way into Fusion mobile apps soon. Wow, that 5-axis positional cam is some great stuff. Make sure you get less setup when you're doing your machining. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm really digging the drawings updates, obviously. We need combine it. Combine operation, how you can visually see what's going to happen before you do it with the color. It's awesome. It is awesome. We'll go ahead and check out our YouTube. We have quick tips, tutorials, webinars for any expertise level. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks. Until next time, guys.